Uh, it, oh, there we go. Okay. That worked. That worked. I'm in. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm good. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm in. Right. Yes, it, it already is. I see that. Okay, perfect. People will show up in just a few moments. Awesome. If you, if you can, catch it. Otherwise, I have no time. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay. Bye for now. All right. Hello. Hello, there you are. Hi, so today my name is Sharon Felber. Hi, ladies. Hello, hi, Michelle. Never mind my sister. She was like, she was so upset she missed it last week. Oh, oh okay. And now oh, she's good. off this week, so she's, let me remind her. And this time it's recording. It's currently recording. It just Yay. records automatically right from the start. Perfect. Oh. Love the t-shirt. Thank you. I went to look at all the promotions and everything that I selected, they were out of stock. <laughs> Probably because of the weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything was on sale, thirty percent off all weekend. I know. That's that's why I was there. But and there were a lot of things available, but none of them were in my size. Yeah. Clearly, I'm popular. Popular yeah. size. And they are always changing everything, right? Fun. I'm currently making coconut curry lentils. The recipe um, from Sharon and Doug's site. I love that. I'm like here cooking, but I'm watching. Yeah, no, I love that recipe. It's so good. All right. Okay, welcome, Anne. Oh, Anne, your background is fabulous. Look right? at that. <laughs> Marvelous background. Hi, Katie. Hi, T. Hey, He's probably at work, so. <laughs> As are we, we're at work too. It just looks a little different. Yeah. Anyway, maybe we can give people just a few more minutes. Yeah. I'm curious to know if anybody here so far is planning on making kombucha or if any of you made it last week. Right? I don't know who was on. I think T was on. Oh, maybe not last week. I plan to make oh, it. Yeah, I was here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so, T. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I tried here. before. I, My I niece gave me a scopey and I messed it up. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. Tell me what messed it up means. I don't know. She gave it to me in the jar and everything. Like it was in the liquid. I sat it on the counter and I don't know what went wrong. Well, this why, was like, why do you think something went wrong? The way it looked? Oh, no, that it is gross. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> oh, so. It should have yeah. things floating in it. It yeah. looks like brains. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's it, such it a should visual. look weird. Right. Oh, I Marisa. have to stop in to get my stuff for the scoby. T, speak up a little bit louder, please. 
I have to go shopping to get all the stuff so I can create one because I have to create one first. Okay. Do you have Do you have tea? Do you have sugar? And do you have water? I try to stay away from tea, sugar, and I got some water, but I'm gonna go and get some. <laughs> okay. And and apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Yeah, that would help. Yeah, I always yeah. have that, but yes, I have to go shopping. I can't wait though. Okay. We will recap the recipe. Um just so that everyone can grab it. And I do have a handout. I believe, um, I say I believe because I asked somebody to send it for me. I believe it went out for anyone whose email I got last week, but in any case, we'll send it out again because there's gonna be new people today. We'll send yeah. it out again. And I was able to add to it based on some new content that we're including today where we'll talk about second ferments. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine asked me just a little while ago, she's like, I make elderberry syrup. Can I use the elderberries? I'm like, probably. <laughs> I don't see why you couldn't. And I don't see why you couldn't add those in there. Can I use That'd hibiscus tea? Instead of regular tea, can I use hibiscus tea? Because I know when you use the, um, the chai tea, which I love, but yeah, I want to try the hibiscus it, one. Is that a green tea or a black tea? Hibiscus. It's the yeah. the it's a flower. Mm. Um, Nina. Yeah, I don't know she what happened. Hibiscus. Here. I've never tried before. Sure, sure. Hibiscus would be marvelous. And great. Do I, have to, do I have to mix it with anything, or can I just use just the hibiscus tea to? You can use just the hibiscus. You might. Okay discover that you like it with ginger, but it's up to you. Look, one of the things that I discovered that I was told for years that you could only use caffeinated tea, that is not true. I eventually learned, right, right, exactly. So Gwen, I've been, I'm not a big caffeine drinker and I've been, no. I don't know, kind of avoiding it um, for a long time. And so when I finally learned that kombucha works, the process happens no matter which tea you use, even an herbal or a caffeine-free decaf, green, white, hibiscus, you name it. Sweet. Anyway, um, okay, so it's 5.05. Yep. What if we start with the lovely ladies that are here yep. and honor everyone's time? And if anyone else joins us, they'll join wherever it is they arrive. And if any of you lovely ladies that are here want to include or invite anyone else or send them a reminder, that would be awesome. And or otherwise, they will catch the replay. All right. Okay, so um, I know some of you. I know many of you. I don't know all of you, though. So my name is right here on my jacket. So in case I forget, I can look down and see. But I am Chef Nina. And um, I am teaching this lovely class, part two of this lovely class with Gwen, and I'll turn it over to her and she can introduce herself and what this class is all about. Okay. Well, my name is Gwen and I'm in New Mexico. Nina's in Florida, so we're all across the country today. And I'm here to show you guys how easy and simple you guys can brew your own kombucha at home. I have been brewing kombucha at home since the mid 90s. I learned about it in Pennsylvania. My mother-in-law brought it up to us from North Carolina, SCOBY and all, and we were all trying it. And you couldn't buy store-bought kombucha back then. So you had to learn how to make it if you wanted to keep drinking it. And I wanted to keep drinking it because it had excellent benefits. But back then, the touted benefit was weight loss. <laughs> So that's what I went, that's the only reason why I drank it back then was for weight loss. Little did I know, it's an immune booster, it helps with your gut health, it has probiotics, it has enzymes, it's got B vitamins, it's got all this awesome stuff in it. And it, and it eases joint pain and does all this wonderful stuff. So little did I know all that stuff was beneficial and I've been drinking it every morning. I drink it every day. I drink a full glass, I drink eight ounces every day. I'm drinking another one right now just because I like it and it will make me, I will be awake a little bit later in the day, but that's okay because I usually fall asleep right after dinner. So this might help me make it till about 10. 
<laughs> I'm one of those people, I eat dinner and then I fall asleep. Uh, it's, it's my digestive, whatever. That's the way it works. So I'm going to show you how it goes. For me, I homebrew for two weeks before I start um, the process all over again. So what I'm going to do is show you start to finish. Only I'm going to show you the process at the end first because I need the jar to do my tea in. So this is how I mark my tea when I'm finished with brewing. Woo, 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 woo. There we go. <laughs> backwards. And so it was done last week, but I don't care because I like the flavor. And this makes it a little more fizzy when I do it like this. So my hands are clean and I don't have any jewelry on. I've already done all the sanitizing and everything. I just washed my hands also. There we Very go. Important. Yeah, we, we got to do that. I operate in glass only. Um, I don't like to use plastic. It's the thing where it pem permeates your food and stuff. So glass only. This is where I'm going to put the SCOBY when I pull it out of the tea before I strain it. Now this tea that I'm doing right now is completely done. So I'm going to strain it and it's going to be ready to put in the refrigerator and drink. Okay, so this, oh, let me show you, uh, is a gallon jar and I'm pulling these out. Show you here. Let me get my jar or my dish. They look slimy, right? They are. And this is okay, Michelle. This is probably what you thought. Oh, gross. This is not good. It's actually good. <laughs> it's okay. That 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 brown stuff on there is totally fine. Now, if it was black, no, no, no. That's mold. And then you're going to start all over. Okay. But the brown stuff is totally fine. You can peel it off of there, you can rinse it off with water, and then you can use it for your next batch, okay? So that's what these are good for. I'm just going to set that to the side for a second. And rinse all the slimy stuff off my hands so that I don't drop the jar on the counter. Now, I like to strain my tea through a cheesecloth. Nina likes to use coffee filters. You use whatever works for you. She uses coffee filters. I don't have patience for coffee filters, quite frankly. So I use cheesecloth and it's like two or three layers. It, it doesn't, it's not rocket science. It's whatever works best for you. And then I just have a rubber band that I've recycled from my vegetables at the grocery store. Uh, this one's uh, asparagus or broccoli, one or the other. I don't know, 4080. Anybody know their numbers from the grocery store? It's always the same everywhere. So, <laughs> yeah. And so then what I do is I'm gonna strain it into plastic pitchers because I don't have glass. This is the only time I'm gonna use plastic. It's just to transfer in the pitcher. And then I keep them in handy dandy little growlers from your local brewery because that's what we have on hand. So we, our friend of ours owns a brewery in town. So I have quite a few of these. We support his business and my husband works there frequently. So, all right, now I'm just gonna strain it into these jugs and I'll show you how much foam is on because with the sugar, the kombucha eats all the sugar. So there's no sugar left, but it will make a little foam on top when you're transferring into the plastic containers, but it goes down. It tastes great. It makes it fizzy. It's like soda. I was just gonna ask you, is it already fizzy? So it is. Yeah, it's like soda. It, it's not as fizzy as soda, but it's like soda. So, and some people, when they flavor it with the fruit and stuff, then it starts tasting like soda. So like, um, I know somebody in Kansas that does a double batch all the time and her kids are drinking it like soda. And another lady in North Carolina, oh, she, she does nine gallons because she has a family of seven drinking kombucha. So she has nine gallons of it brewing around the house and it's constantly going. I can't imagine keeping up with that much kombucha. It just seems a little crazy. So now what I'll do is I'll just transfer this already filtered kombucha into the glass jars. It's ready to drink and I'll keep it in the refrigerator and I'll just drink it every day. So that's the end process. Go ahead, Nina. And that's what's called a first ferment. Yes, first ferment. And, and you can stop there if you want, 
it's, like I do. Yeah, it's a simple, plain flavor, um, kind of like a little bit of a sour tart apple juice, um, uh, and possibly sparkling or lightly, lightly fizzy, lightly effervescent. Um, and even if it's not, it's delicious the way it is. Yep. And you can get creative with it from there and do what's called a second ferment. This part um, when I'm not sure if when is done, but when we get to a second ferment, that's a new uh, content that we did not cover last week. Right. No, I have not done second ferment, but I've read about it enough that I could do it. But you know, I this is the tea that I enjoy, and it turns out excellent. So I don't have to do anything with it. It is a black tea, but it's an organic and. The cheapest I can find it is on Amazon. <laughs> so I buy it from Amazon and I get it delivered regularly so I never run out because I did run out this spring during this lovely pandemic. So I did run out. Okay, so I already have my sugar pre-measured. I'm gonna use organic cane sugar. Yes, I'm using sugar, but again, the kombucha does digest your sugar. So it's not there in the end. Nina, did you wanna say something? I was just gonna say, she has, Gwen has very specific teas. I want you to see that I have a whole hodgepodge. This is a whole yeah. shoebox of random mix and match, whatever, and I just, I take whatever I think sounds good. So it, it can be very specific or it can be a wild card. It's up to you. Yep. So that's what's cool about kombuchas. It's, you know, a little science, but it's also very flexible with your flavor. So I'm gonna put sugar into my gallon jar. And I already have my tea bags in the jar and I have water already hot in this stainless steel pot. So I'm gonna make this pretty quick. Normally I would make like sun tea and sun tea is the same process, only instead of using hot water, you just use regular tap water and you sit it out on the porch and it sits out there for hours in the sun and it brews itself and then you bring it back in and it's already done. So you don't really have to do anything with it. So I have the sugar in here, and since it's so hot, I just swirl it around and it dissolves. <laughs> it's really easy, okay? Yep, we'll send you the email. No worries, T, we'll get you. Because it's a lot to remember, right? It's, it's not a lot once you've done it a few times, but it is a lot when you're just starting out. And all of this is also available online. Okay, look at that. See, you can use <laughs> recycled jars, okay? So if you have anybody that owns a restaurant, get a recycled gallon jar. You don't have to pay for it. it. They can be quite expensive at the store. Walmart wants like $10 for a gallon jar. I, I'm not paying that. <laughs> Are you putting stuff on your face? I am. I'm nice. taking just just to start it so that later we can talk about what it I is like that, that. what I crazy like that. thing did nina just do i like that it's perfect sorry i had to get a, a trivet for that hot jar on my countertop i didn't want it to break and so this is just going to steep here for a couple minutes i won't let it go very long it'll steep there a couple minutes and it'll cool down and then all we have to do is float the SCOBY back on top and add a little starter tea and I cover it with cheesecloth and put it away for two weeks. It's, it's really quite simple. It's, it's not a hard thing for me to do. And I do it regularly. I just did it last week for everybody and I'm doing it again today. And uh, sometimes I forget my tea. So don't be alarmed if you forget your tea and you leave it overnight. You can come back to it tomorrow. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You can even leave the tea bags in it. It's okay. It, it, <laughs> I haven't found that it hurts mine. I don't know if Nina's had any bad experiences with in fact, over brewing. I, I leave my tea bags in to let it cool on the counter overnight. Yeah, there we go. See, she leaves it overnight anyway. So what I'm gonna do is speed it up with some ice cubes here in a little minute and, <laughs> and we'll cool it down because you cannot add hot tea with your SCOBY or you'll kill your SCOBY. Okay, hot tea and the little slimy pancake called a scoby or a mushroom, you will kill it and that'll be the end of it. And it won't come back and you'll have to start again. 
let's explain what a SCOBY is. It's a uh, symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeasts. There we so go. instead of saying all of that, it's the first letter of each word. So it's a SCOBY. And basically it means that it's a way of getting uh, good bacteria into your body and it helps fight off the bad bacteria that we all have, it's normal, that we all have in our body. And it helps create a much healthier microbiome, which basically means your, your gut, your intestines, your, your innards. And that healthy gut microbiome actually uh, controls our brain and controls our, our depression and our, um, you know, unhappy thoughts, it just, it, it, I don't know about controls, that's a little harsh, but it influences all of those things. So having a healthy microbiome or gut bacteria is critical, and this is such a lovely way to achieve it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and we're all focused right now on our immune systems, so this is one excellent way to get more antioxidants in. It's got natural antioxidants in it. So we Nina and I both take Juice Plus, which is also loaded with antioxidants. So we're just packing antioxidants in all day long, every day to help our immune systems be strong so that we can fight all the germs and the illnesses naturally out there and have a fighting chance <laughs> when we're out there. Right, Nina? Absolutely. And That's exactly and what we're doing. I changed everything about how I eat and how I live um, probably about 12 years ago when I first came down to Florida, but 25 years ago, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and started then 25 years ago learning how to take care of myself. So right. I've been looking at immunity um, because my life depended on it, my wellness, my health depended on it. So I've been studying how to improve my immunity and how to boost it for 25 years easily. Um, and so kombucha is definitely a part of that, as is Juice Plus, like quick, quick plug. Um, right. But it's a great way for me every single day to give myself a, a good solid base of nutrition, no matter what I might eat or, or might forget to eat or be too rushed to get. Right. Exactly. Because it's hard. You know, we go to the store and it's not there. So at least we know we've got a little bit of backup, you know, if we need it, because we can't find it at the store right now. <laughs> you know, or if you do, it's way too expensive. You know, this is a much more much more affordable back there than than uh, I don't know, twelve, fifteen dollars a pound for elderberries or more probably. More, oh, wow. twenty five, thirty. They're yeah. expensive. I know they're very expensive. So, okay, so I'm going to throw some ice in here and cool it down and add a little bit of starter tea in the scoby. And then I'm gonna share a brief video on Juice Plus so you guys can learn about all the products because they're awesome. I started using them 12 and a half years ago. It was part of how I smuggled fruits and vegetables into my daughter. I learned about it at a Christmas craft show. <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking for, but I saw this sugar display and I was like, what is this, you know? And it was the soda bottles and they were showing how much sugar is in a soda and all the candy and everything. And I kind of already knew that. I grew up in Boulder, Colorado, and I've been eating raw veggies since I was a little kid. And my mom brought me up as a flower child. So I was used to that, but I didn't know how to get my daughter to eat fruits and vegetables. So I had bought in a cookbook teaching me how to smuggle cauliflower in as cheese sticks and stuff like that. And that did not work. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like cauliflower cheese sticks. She's 24 now and she still won't eat cauliflower cheese sticks. So, <laughs> but she'll eat her Juice Plus every day. So when she was 11, we started taking Juice Plus and she'd suffered with chronic ear infections since she was a baby. I didn't have any idea it could be anywhere associated with food, but I thought, what the heck? Free vegetables and fruits for my daughter because I bought mine and hers were free. So I was in like sin, that was it. She started taking them and her ear infections cleared up. I had no idea what, I just didn't even know, but they were gone. So that, that was a win for me. Um, we were eliminated basically going to the doctor very often. However, you know, we had to have the wisdom teeth pulled and she came through that well because first thing I did when I got home was I made her take those capsules 
She wasn't going to be eating the chewables because they were going to stick to her teeth. So I had no idea. I just knew that she had to get them in her and I made her swallow those things down. I wish I would have known. I could have made her a smoothie. <laughs> she would have drank a smoothie, but lesson learned. You can make a smoothie and you can put those capsules in your smoothie. That's what I do every day. And so seven years ago, I learned that I have MS. So two weeks ago, I learned that Nina had MS. But seven years ago, I learned that I had MS. And the first thing I did was figured out that food had to help. Somehow I knew food had to help. And my second call I made after my diagnosis was to my Juice Plus rep to ask her what kind of research we have and what is it good for? What does Juice Plus help with MS? Well, it helps with systemic inflammation. We've got three or four studies that prove that it reduces systemic inflammation. Well, for MS, that's a disease of inflammation. Inflammation is creating the lesions in our brain and it's cr what creates the havoc in our bodies. So we don't want any more lesions in our brain or in our spine because that's where we can become paralyzed and lose muscle control and all that lovely stuff and a multitude of other things. Nina and I are doing quite well, thank you very much, because we both follow very good, healthy eating lifestyles. So by eating Juice Plus twice a day and following a very great healthy living lifestyle, I'm med free. I don't have any side effects. I don't have any weird funky things from meds. And I'm very active. I ski every winter. I ski like 50 days a, a year or more if I can. They closed early this year, so I didn't get them all in. But you know what? I don't care. Um, I've been healthy this whole time and I'm really not worried. So, <laughs> that I love my backup plan. My backup plan is the best plan for me. And I've relied on it now for 12 and a half years. So I love it. And, and six years ago, I joined this community of all these healthy living people. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate them, especially after this week, we've had, you know, some extremely uh, big growth, let's call it that. Um, this week and we all feel like we're a lot closer together because of the growth that we had and I would love for any one of you guys to join us because it's like the best community ever. So we saw, share all these health tips. That's what we do. We just share health tips and tricks and we, we lock arms with you and we support you on the way. That's what we do. So let me pull this tea off quick and then I'll show you that video. Before we go to the video, I want to let you know what you'll get to enjoy after the video so that you make sure that you stick with us. Um, I'm not only going to show you all how to have a second ferment, but I'm also going to show you what you can do with all the SCOBYs because once you have one SCOBY, you will easily have about 938 SCOBYs. So we'll talk to you about all the fun things you can do and eat and drink and ways to use it around the house, ways to use it as a chemical peel on your face. Um, so there's lots of fun stuff and a treat for all of you. So I, I know a lot of you know about Juice Plus, but I'm choosing some of the fruit gummies to make my second ferment with instead of using fruit. So after we watch the video that Gwen is gonna tee up, come back for all of that. Okay. Hold on, let me get that going here. Let's see, do I have control of the screen then, Nina? Oh, oh that's a good question. Let me see if I can do it. Yeah, yeah. it might be me. No, I think I can, let's see. Okay. You tell me. Uh, looks good. Good? When it yes. comes to our health, diet is at the center of everything and fruits and vegetables need to be at the center of our diets. I'm here today to tell you more about Juice Plus, whole food based fruit and vegetable capsules that have given thousands of people a jumpstart to better diets and better health. We all know we need to eat lots of fruits and vegetables, half our plate at every meal, and we need to eat a wide variety too. But for most of us, even on our very best days, it's hard to do that. And that's where Juice Plus comes in. Juice Plus is whole food nutrition from 20 fruits and vegetables, 30 if you count the berry bush, that bridges the gap between what we should eat and what we actually do eat every day. I say whole food because it is food, 
concentrated to deliver a powerful nutritional punch in a few small capsules. We harvest the produce at just the right time to ensure the nutrition is at its peak. Freeze the produce to lock in that nutrition and then, well, sort of pulverize everything, peels and all, into a pulp to unlock that nutrition and concentrate it. The peel is really important because, let's take an orange, for example. There's more vitamin C, gram for gram, in the peel than in the fruit itself. And if you're like me, you don't usually eat the peel. We dry that pulverized pulp, peels and all, at carefully controlled temperatures to protect the nutrients from damage. Then, blend it into Juice Plus fruit, vegetable, and berry powders, delivered to you in plant-based capsules or chewables. And we do all of this at state-of-the-art freezing, drying, blending, and manufacturing facilities. Juice Plus checks all the boxes. It's 100% plant-based and 100% vegan even the capsules themselves. It's made entirely from non-GMO ingredients, it's gluten-free, and it's third-party NSF certified, independently confirming that what's on the label is really in the product. Juice Plus is supported by over 20 years of independent clinical research conducted at prestigious hospitals and universities around the world showing the benefits of Juice Plus on heart health, lung health, obesity, the immune system, even our DNA. There have been more than 35 studies and counting on Juice Plus published in leading medical and scientific journals, making it easily the most researched branded nutritional product ever. And get this, if you're a parent or a grandparent or even an aunt or uncle, you can get Juice Plus free for a child by enrolling in our special program for families. This is our way to get Juice Plus into the hands of more families and encourage healthier eating habits for the next generation. Juice Plus also offers other whole food based products that help you jumpstart and maintain a healthier lifestyle. Juice Plus complete shake mixes make it easy to replace unhealthy calories with a healthy shake or a smoothie. Mix with other helpful ingredients to start your day or enjoy at lunch, or as an afternoon pick-me-up. Complete is rich in plant-based sources of protein and fiber and contains an entire range of whole food-based ingredients different from those in Juice Plus capsules or chewables. And Juice Plus Complete Bars are another tasty way to replace unhealthy calories with healthier ones. Juice Plus Omega offers a whole food blend of five different omega fatty acids, three, five, six, seven, and nine. What also makes Juice Plus Omega Blend so unique is it's a 100% plant-based omega product. We bypass the middle fish and go straight to the fish's source, the algae. And last but not least, there's Tower Garden by Juice Plus, a vertical aeroponic home growing system that lets you grow your own fresh fruits and vegetables year round, indoors or out. We're proud that our Juice Plus products have been that one simple change that's helped jumpstart thousands of people to better diets and better health. We bet they can do the same for you. Yay. Okay. There we go. All right, so during that brief interlude, I added a bunch of ice and cooled off the tea. So it's nice and chilled now. Like I said, never add your SCOBY to hot tea or it will kill it. Okay, so nice cold tea. And then I'm just gonna take one of these lovely slimy pancakes and I'm gonna put it in the tea. I just plop it down in there and it's gonna come back up. But if it sinks to the bottom, don't worry, it'll come back up there. It never fails, it'll float back up there. You don't have to dig it up and make it sit on top. It, it does it all by itself. And then I put a little tea in there to keep this other one from getting dried out. I'm gonna dump that in there. So it's like a starter. So like you would have a starter for sourdough bread or a friendship bread or any of those things. We used to make friendship bread back in the 80s and pass it around. 
give them things away, but you know, used, used to do the friendship bread thing. So this is the same thing. You have to have a little starter in there at the same time. Now, one thing I wanted to show you is I don't do anything fancy with my cheesecloth. This is from Walmart. It's food grade, it's cotton. You can get better. You can get unbleached food grade cotton or cheesecloth at a health food store, but I didn't. I just got that. You can use the nice paper coffee filters as well. I'm not patient, like I said. <laughs> so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top this off with some water because I like to have a full gallon. So you can see I can still put in a couple inches of water. So it's probably a couple cups. And then I'll just put this on there with a rubber band and I'll mark it again with a yellow sticky and the date that it's ready, which for me is two weeks because my house sits at like 65 to 70 degrees or 75 and it doesn't go that fast. So if it's hotter, like Nina's is a hotter place where she keeps hers, it brews a lot faster. So you can check it, you just smell it and sniff it. You can look in there. I read on uh, kombuchacamp.com, which is spelled with two Ks, kombucha and camp, both K, all one word, crammed together. They said you could put a straw into your kombucha underneath of the mushroom or the scoby, and then you could sip it and taste it that way to see if you like it. So like Nina knows hers is in five days. I know mine takes two weeks or more because we've done it for 25 years. <laughs> but to try it out, put a straw in there and sip underneath the mushroom and you could try it or you can get the spigot like Nina's showing you in, in her picture there. And she'll show you when we uh, spotlight her next. Um, because there we go. Now, show your jar. <laughs> when she comes back on, she'll show her jar better so that you can see it in, in big size. <laughs> But um, I'm done. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thanks for getting us started. Ask questions. If you guys have questions, and I'll, I'll answer while Nina's going. There, yeah, there's a few questions already in the, in the chat. Um, so last week, we made, when we ran this class, uh, I made my batch of kombucha on, on camera. Uh, and so I just want to show you, for those of you, like one of the questions was, where do you get a first OB? So what I want to tell you is you actually end up making your own first goby. You can get one. You can buy one. You can inherit one. You can get a baby from somebody else's. And let me show you what I mean for that. So I, because I had so many scobies, I started last week's batch with a scoby. It's all the way at the bottom of the jar. I'm not, even though my hands are clean, I scrubbed up like surgically. I'm not going to reach my hand all the way down there because not only did it already make a new one, the new one already started making a baby of its own. So I wanna show you what that is. So here's the latest baby, and it's so, it's so young um, that it is super thin, and it just looks like something stringy, but if I were to open it all up, see, I'm tearing it, it's really young. But let me show you the one that it made from last week, I didn't put this in there. This grew, this, it's already thick enough that you can't, you can't see through it. I can't read the newspaper through it. Um, but it is totally moist and young, so it makes it on its own. That mm -hmm. said, for example, for my friend Ann watching who's local, I had offered that I would send her home with her own SCOBY and liquid. For those of you that don't have somebody who can provide one, when it comes to starting your kombucha, instead of putting in a cup of starter fluid, because it's your first one, you won't already have starter fluid, you'll use a cup of apple cider vinegar, the raw apple cider vinegar. It has to be one that says on the label, I don't care about the brand, I'm not, you know, I'm brand agnostic. As long as it says that it's raw or it has the mother included which means that it's murky looking. It's like you can't see through it. It's got floaties in it. That's the right thing. Those floaties are gonna make more floaties for you, which are beneficial in your kombucha. So I'm just gonna pour these back in. Um, so, yeah. So the thing is, the longer that my kombucha 
stays in the jar with that new SCOBY, um, it will keep multiplying. It will keep making more babies. And as far as touching, your question about touching it, um, I, I made sure that my hands were clean. Um, so, I mean, I don't usually pull one out and put it back in, but I'm hoping that for that little amount of time, should be okay. Um, and it's already advanced enough that it's, you know, it's in the middle of the brewing process. And what it needs now is more sweetened, something sweet in there. It could be sugar, but I'd rather not just add sugar to it. I'd add fruit because sugar won't give you a flavor. It'll give you sweetness. I want a flavor. So in this case, just to kind of tie it back to Juice Plus, and so many people now with immunity are looking at elderberry, right? Well, we have our own. We not only have elderberry in our, um, in our gummies, but we have all sorts of other fabulous fruits in here that are filled with antioxidants, including cacao, including other berries. Um, so I thought it would be fun to take some of these and whir them up in, uh, in my little portable blender. And in fact, in, in complete disclosure, uh, at the last minute, I was gonna use the berry ones, but at the last minute I decided because I had spirulina and because the recipe I'm giving you is gonna have um, either spirulina or moringa, um, which are super beneficial. So I decided to use my green gummies instead. So those are the, the veggie gummies. So my slurry what i put in here is i put in some of the the kombucha and i put in a whole handful of those green gummies and i added um spirulina and i added moringa um and so all of that is now kind of thick it's almost like well it's thinner than pancake but it's like a smoothie okay so all i'm going to do is take i'm going to open this up um yeah there we go um, and I'm going to take some of this and put each one in a bottle that I have prepared. So I have some empty bottles. Uh, and this is my, this is my being frugal. Here's my funnel. It's just a, what once was a Dasani water bottle. Cut it and turn that into a funnel. Um, so I just pop it in my bottle in the neck. And then I take a few spoons of this. And I'll show you what that looks like. So basically I have about like one finger full of my fruit slurry in the bottom. And now to that, I'm going to add my own kombucha. So the funnel's gonna go back in so I don't make a mess everywhere. And the, um, the jar that I showed you has a spigot, which makes it really easy. Sorry, I'm off camera there. The jar that I use has a spigot, which makes it really easy. So I've just poured a glass of kombucha and basically, I would keep going. It's going to be painful just waiting for me to do that. But I'm going to tell you that I would keep going all the way up to the, the top of the shoulders. So where the bottle starts to, to curve. And then you want to leave an inch or two of space because what's going to happen as I cap it is um, the sugar is going to be eaten by the yeasts. And that is what creates fermentation. And that's what we want. That's how you get carbonation. That's how you get fizziness. Um, and it also is how you avoid your kombucha tasting too sweet. Um, so because all of the sugar gets eaten by the yeast, which turns into carbonation and fermentation. So that's why I said, so I'm going to fill up to here. I'm going to leave the last inch or two up at the top. And then every day for the next maybe five days, because my garage is warm, I'm going to burp it. So all that means is I'm going to twist open the top just a little, just to let that pop out and then close it right back up. You want to close it because you want the pressure, you want that carbonation to build if you want a fizzy drink. If you don't want a fizzy drink, you don't need to do any of this. You could just stop at the first fermentation, which Gwen explained. Um, so the second fermentation gives you a chance to play with flavors. Part of the recipe that I've included also shows you that you can add things like essential oils or herbs. Um, so when I recommend the recipe that I give you that has spirulina or it has moringa, 
but I chose for fruit, I mean, unless you want to play with your gummies like I'm trying out this time, but for fruit, I used kiwi um, and spinach uh, and then also ginger and put it all together. I actually added ginger to this um, and then just blend it all up. Uh, add it to your existing F1 ferment, and you're gonna wait anywhere from that five to 10 days. You're gonna test it, burp it, taste test it, and when you like how it is, you need to take it out of wherever you're storing it and put it in the fridge. The refrigerator, the cold temperature, is going to stop it from continuing to change. It will slow it down dramatically. It won't technically stop it 100%, but it will slow it down. And if you didn't slow it down, it would continue to get more and more acidic and more and more fizzy. It could explode, which is why you burp it every day. And it can also turn to alcohol. Um, so you want to kind of stop it. And also, you know, you want it at the beneficial level. Um, like alcohol is fun, but it's not necessarily healing in our bodies. If anything, it's the, exactly, it is moonshine. Um, that's why I say it's booch, not hooch, but it could, you could go from booch to hooch. Um, so, so the idea is, you know, the reason that we're all doing this, partly because it tastes good, partly, I don't know about anybody else, but partly because I have to be frugal about it. So I love kombucha enough that if I'm buying it at $5 a drink, that adds up really fast. So I've, I've learned how to be cheap about this and make my own. Um, and for the, yeah, exactly. The one that Gwen is holding up, right. I bought so, this the other day and it was three bucks. Three yeah. bucks yeah. for a little teeny thing. And I make a gallon for less than $3. Right. You know? It's pennies <laughs> on the dollar to make your own. Yeah. Welcome for ours. Um, it is absolutely pennies to make your own. And for me to get this one at $3, I had to buy two um, because they only price it at $3 if you buy two for six. Um, so, so it's painful. Um, so my pain point was that it was too expensive to keep buying it all the time. So I learned how to make it. Um, and it is literally cents on the dollar. And the, the last thing that I think I shared last week is that you can add a lot of scraps. So we talked now about adding fruit to make your F2. I also told you how you could add your juice plus gummies to make your second ferment, but you could also add just scraps from fruit. So for example, next time you're peeling an apple or even if you don't peel it, but you don't eat the core in the center, save a few cores and stick that in as part of your second ferment. So imagine you have apple in there already, add a cinnamon stick to it and you have your, you know, your apple pie, apple and cinnamon. What a nice kombucha that is. Or add a little bit of, uh, of ginger. And if you don't have fresh ginger growing, and you have dried, that's great. If you don't have dried and you have powdered ginger, that's great. And if you don't have that and you have candy ginger, that's great too. Um, and so the recipe that I'm sending you, there you go, frozen ginger. You know, the other thing is that sometimes there's like a ginger essential oil. So in the recipe that I'm sending you, I talk about using cilantro oil, but I had to learn the hard way. I learned this from a friend of mine who was making kombuchas that what she did, actually she's an essential oil rep, so she showed me that for cilantro, which is so overpowering, all we did was taking a, um, a toothpick, touching a toothpick to the oil, and taking that toothpick and dragging it, you know, through in the surface of the liquid of your, of your kombucha. Wow. That dragging that drop of the little bit of oil that clings to the end of the toothpick is enough because a whole drop, one whole drop is way too much. It's just too overpowering, but doesn't mean that you can't use, you know, a fraction of it. So there's a lot of ways to be playful. And there's a lot of ways, like for those of us with tower gardens, um, like let's say the, the stalks of the rosemary or the stalks of the basil, so maybe we're already making uh, pesto from the basil from our tower garden, but then what do you do with the stems? I mean, personally, I put it in my, in my uh, pesto, but for anyone who doesn't, or if you're growing other herbs and rosemary and thyme, you could take those stems and add it to your second ferment, 
So for somebody who is being so frugal about things as I am, it's a great way to use leftover things that you might otherwise throw out or, or compost. Um, anyway, uh, some of the other tips that I gave last week that I'll just touch on now that for your SCOBY, like for example, I just put my SCOBY in the blender with a little bit of the, of the liquid, a little bit of the kind of over vinegary one, which is why Michelle, when I asked why you thought maybe your, your SCOBY didn't work or, or your kombucha went too far, like it's okay, it happens, it's gonna happen. I guarantee it's gonna happen to all of us. Don't throw it out, there's so many things you can do. So for one thing, it's a really cheap but super effective beautiful facial mask that kind of mimics a chemical peel. I do not have sensitive skin. For those of you that might have sensitive skin, um, like those of you that, that are uh, cautious out in the sun, um, you tend to be fairer and have more sensitive skin, I would blend up a little avocado at the same time as the SCOBY so that you don't get too many acids on your skin the avocado will smooth that out. For me, I don't have any of that issue. So now the SCOBY, I, I applied the SCOBY with a brush at the start of, uh, of Gwen's chat um, and it was wet and it's dried on there now. Now all I'd have to do is take a warm uh, washcloth and just wipe it all off and I'll have you know lovely skin under that. Um, I try and remember not to answer the door when I have like avocado on my face and all sorts of crazy things, but I do, I do all of that. Um, anyway, and, and you know, to get a really good chemical peel, if you go and get a facial, you're looking at $75, $100, and here's the SCOBY that you're making for pennies, and all of the natural fruit acids that are in there are beneficial not only in our stomach, in our microbiome, in our intestines, on our skin, on our face, but um, one last place they're great in the household, they actually make a wonderful toilet bowl cleaner. Um, all of those acids will help clean your toilet bowl. So when you start kombucha and you're drinking it for your own health, you're going to, it's like it's a whole pharmacy cabinet. Um, it, it, it's a whole prescription cabinet all at one. Um, and so you not only have something delicious to, to drink, I'll tell you about eating it in a second. It's great for, um, for body, for facial creams. It's great for household cleaning as well. And the last thing that I love talking about is that it's great for dogs. It is great, the probiotics, they need probiotics in their intestines. The same way they have inflammation in their joints. A lot of the different breeds in particular um, suffer from inflammation. So it's great to incorporate. And one of the best ways to do that is you take your SCOBY, even if it's one of the old leathery ones that looks like brains like this, if you take, oh, Michelle, your face is priceless right now. Thank you. Um, I'm glad I saw that. So if you take one of those and you soak it overnight just in clear, cool water and you let it um, soak overnight, take it out. You, you might consider throwing out that water. You can, or you can use it in the garden or whatever. It's great. By the way, these are great for compost also. They're great for um, amending your soil. Um, but in any case, the SCOBY that you've now been soaking in water has had a lot of that vinegary taste washed away from it. You can then cut that up and use it for raw vegan like sushi substitute. You can use it um, stir in stir fries and in soups as a meat substitute. Um, these are, you know, these are they're great vegan possibilities here. And I put it in a dehydrator and make doggy treats out of it. Some of them I just let get dry and then I'll take them out and I'll twist them and put them back in either plain or with spirulina or with peanut butter on them. But all of that to make it appealing for, for the dog because it's great for their tummies as well. You'll see they'll have like super healthy poops too. Um, let's see, there was a question there. Uh, aha, the question is um, whether the kombuchas that you get from the store taste similar to homemade. Well. Um, I'm going to answer that with asking you a question, which is, do you ever notice that anything else that you buy from the store, when you make it homemade, there's, there's a big difference? Now, how many of you have found that to be true? Yeah, I usually find that anything that I make, that I can buy when I make it, 
not because I'm a chef, but because we control the quality of our ingredients, that anything that I make is better than what I can buy that's made on a commercial level in the store. So A, I think they can be better, but B, the bigger, and this is really, um, Gwen, I think we talked about this much earlier on last week, this is really, and thank you for all of you staying on to this point, here is the magic bullet. Here's what happens. When you buy kombucha in the store, doesn't matter what the label says. I don't care what is written on the label. The label says that it's raw. It is not raw, not anymore. So you have to make your own to get the benefit of truly raw kombucha. And the reason it's not is because, as I was describing to you, the longer it sits on the shelf out of the refrigerator, being transferred all around the country on trucks sitting in warehouses, it will continue to grow to alcohol if it were truly raw. So there was a huge incident 15 years ago that all of these brands of kombucha, GT, Synergy, Honest Tea, you name it, all of them, they all had to throw out thousands and millions of gallons of kombucha because it was all growing, it was continuing to grow to the alcohol stage. And the ATF took a very dim view of people selling an alcoholic product without paying alcohol taxes to the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Division. So ever since then, all of the kombuchas that you buy are actually pasteurized, even if the label says raw, never pasteurized. I'm telling you this as an insider in the industry. They are lying and it doesn't matter. They are lying for their purposes, but you know they're lying because they can get away with it. So once you know better, you do better. So if you want the benefit in your gut, in your body, if you want the anti-inflammation that you can get from truly raw kombucha, you need to either make your own or buy it from somebody who is making their own. Those are really the only two options. There just isn't a product out there if it's sold commercially. So for example, there is one gal here locally, very locally, like micro, hyper local, who makes her own kombuchas. It is sold in a few smaller stores and you know who I'm talking about. Um, that product is a truly raw one, but it is not widely distributed. So once you get to something that has distribution all around the country, it is no longer raw regardless of what's on the label. Okay, that's done, I'm done with my soapbox, but that is truly the reason why you wanna learn. Look, we're all, we're all here, whether it's in, in, in our communities or with our friends and families, or if it's on this Zoom, we're all here because we care about our health and our loved one's health. Um, and you know, that's the common theme for those of us that are involved in Juice Plus. That's our common thread is inspiring healthy living amongst everyone, but it extends to what we eat, how we eat, what we cook, what we buy, what we grow, and what we tell you about. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my living basically. That is what I do for a living. Um, as a certified uh, health coach and as a healthy living chef and as a tower garden representative and as a juice plus representative. And I think my friend Gwen has very much the same, the same yeah. background. We're yeah. like twins. Yeah. Yeah. And we just figured it out because <laughs> yeah. I'm a certified health coach as well. So yeah. In, in a couple of different you know genres so it's it's great i love it i love it you know so, and this community is what brought me to it so that you know i, I that's why i'm here because i love to share healthy living with everybody so i hope everybody loved it if anybody has any questions we can stay on for two three more minutes but i'm just curious if anyone has questions now is the time and um, let's make sure to get your email addresses and I will send you um, what I've written up all about kombucha and some recipes and uh, lots of tips and tricks in there. Um, so if, if you haven't already put it in, oh, and it's definitely recording this week, okay? It is absolutely yes. 
definitively, like I'm seeing it recording right now. So I guarantee we will have a recording to share with all of you and people from last week who wanted it also. Thankfully. Yeah, so <laughs> any questions? Katie, I think we answered T's question because she asked if, if you can get drunk off of drinking too much kombucha. And I think you answered that because apparently you probably could T back in the day <laughs> and ATF put a, squ a squash on that. So I don't think you can get drunk off of kombucha anymore unless if you're over brewing it at home like, like um, Nina explained with the sugar process. You could let it go too long and have some boozy kombucha. <laughs> Right. It could really, you could probably hurt yourself, so you might want to be careful, you know? Yeah, I mean, you can let your, you can make your booch and let it sit and let it become hooch. You can go from yeah. booch to hooch. They sell it. But uh, I, I won't be able to come bail you out. That's the only thing. So do that privately. Yeah. Keep it on the DL. Share it with your friends and family. Make it your holiday fun drink. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Are we and adding our email address in here? Uh, if, if you'd like to be, uh, if you'd like to receive the document, then yes, please. And then in the recording, um, people can ask us for, for the, the documents in the comments after we post the recording. And then we can, we can get it to them then. Okay. I, I want to check that, um, is it Maria or Marla? Maria, I think. Probably Maria. Maria. I just want to make sure that you got, that you feel you got the answer to your question about the first GOBI. And T, I know it was your question also. No? No, I don't understand how to start the first GOBI or where to even get it. Perfect. So let me just recap that for you because it really is critical. So first of all, you will end up making your own first SCOBY. It will make itself. And the answer to that, when you get the recipe, the recipe is very simple. The recipe is one cup of sugar, eight tea bags, one gallon of water. Now, that's your recipe to make your kombucha. However, and Gwen, do you have what I think you're about to hold up? Okay. Yeah. So... In addition, if you do not have your own SCOBY, you are going to add uh, maybe about a cup, since you're making a gallon of tea, you're gonna add a cup of apple cider vinegar, or you're going to add your own SCOBY and starter fluid. It's one or the other. If you don't have a first SCOBY and starter fluid, or you don't have a friend who can give you or sell you one, then you're gonna use apple cider vinegar with yeah. the mother, okay? So Anne, I wanna make sure you can nod. I know you're muted, but I wanna make sure, okay, great. And I have a SCOBY for you. Um, so the thing is, once you make your first batch of kombucha, if you did not have a SCOBY and you used apple cider vinegar, you will form your own first SCOBY. And that first baby, it's like bunny rabbits, it's gonna keep reproducing. It's going to keep making more of them. Yeah. And before you know it, you will be overrun with SCOBYs and you will make new friends that you will give new friends a SCOBY or you're going to learn to use it as a facial peel or um, making uh, salad dressings. And what we talked about last week is that one SCOBY is amazing in your smoothie. And if, if, if on top of that, if your smoothie is even a juice plus smoothie, um, it's amazing. Anytime you do a fruit berry smoothie, uh, it just, it heightens the flavor. The berryness of your smoothie is brought so much out by adding a SCOBY into your smoothie. It's amazing. And all of that is beneficial for your health from the inside out. Your skin will be clearer. Your, um, I, I will just say, if you... If you're not used to drinking it, start slowly because it will give you some digestive, you know, there's gonna be some digestive changes. In other words, it will send you to the bathroom. Um, but that's, you know, that's important, that's useful. It will start to clean you out. So you can work up your tolerance of it. Gwen now drinks eight ounces a day in the morning. Eight, at least eight ounces in the morning, first thing on an empty stomach. 
So some people drink the warm lemon juice water and things like that. I drink kombucha, but it doesn't affect me like that anymore. And it hasn't affected me like that for a long, long time. So it, it does, once your stomach comes back to homeostasis, you're good. Right. And, and if you already eat really cleanly, it might not affect you like that in the first place. Right. And if it does, just start out small, start out with a few tablespoons, start out with a shot, work your way up. And eventually it's, you know, eventually you don't even feel it and you can drink eight ounces at a time and drink it like it's a beverage and enjoy the, the, the health benefits of it at the same time. Um, so Maybe. let me make sure that Maria, now you feel more confident about starting? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank All you. Right. Did I answer everybody else's question or is there anything still remaining? Hi, Sharon. Hey, birthday boy. Hey, you guys. Well, I, I think Katie's deal is your fiance probably is eating the wrong food. <laughs> so we need to talk separately about that. And, <laughs> and Michelle, maybe because of the caffeine and the, in the drink, maybe, but you know, you don't have to use caffeine. So, you know, it's just whatever. And even during the shred, I, I start every day with kombucha, even during the shred, straight up. So I've been doing it, you know, what, four years now on the shred. So it doesn't affect the shred at all. I, I like it. And you can absolutely use non-caffeinated tea. You can use right. hibiscus, you can use chamomile. Like all of those have lovely flavors. So think about what would go well with that. I'm learning how to make them. Ginger and chamomile could be really nice. Yeah. Anyway, I include a few pairings, um, but if as you, once you read through it, if you have questions or you need other suggestions, reach out, I'm available. I, I love this stuff. This is. I do this for a living because I love it so much. This is playtime for me. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions, uh, how to make your kombucha or how to resurrect it, if it's gone too far or what to do with it or new flavors, um, you know, between the two of us, you have like 25 years of kombucha making, if not, if I not. I think 50. both of us have 25 years <laughs> each. So you got 50 years of practice here. Right. <laughs> And that includes failures. And so, you know, we know what to do when it goes wrong. Because um, I can make toilet bowl cleaner. Let me tell you. I, Lipton tea, okay, I'm just going to tell you right now. Black Lipton tea. No, no, no. Unless you want toilet bowl cleaner, then go ahead and use the black Lipton tea. And leave it in the garage for a week or two. Or put it on top of your refrigerator and you'll have toilet bowl cleaner. I, I did that for several years, several years, and you could only drink like an ounce or two a day. Oh, it was awful. It was awful. I'm so glad it tastes yummy now. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so thank you all for joining us. We had a ton of fun. I hope you did too. This was fantastic. Thank you, thank ladies. You. It was so You're good. Welcome. Okay, well, this, this might get to be a regular thing, Gwen. You never know. You never know. I, I expect it could. Thank you, ladies. Awesome. This was awesome. I am I'm gonna Bye. in a week to see how uh, how it worked using my Juice Plus gummies. Um, but if it worked as well as I think it will, then I definitely am down for teaching this class on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. That is so creative. <laughs> I can't wait to hear how they turn out. You'll have to let us know for sure. All right, everyone. Thank Stay you. Safe. Thank you. Thank for you coming. Bye. I'm going to get my scoby. Then, uh, Good. Uh, I can probably bring it to you tomorrow. Okay. You want to sit poolside? Ooh, maybe. Hey. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 All right. Bye, everyone. See you. Have a nice evening. Bye. Bye. Thank you.